Hello and welcome to the Skip Base Fantasy Disc Golf Podcast, your choice for the most responsive disc golf podcast to its small but awesome fan base. That was the Dandy Warhols from Portland, Oregon, setting us up for a great weekend here over in Portland. That song was the intro music to the TV show Veronica Mars. Uh, I looked at the weather this weekend and it looks great. Not your typical Portland rainy forecast. If that was going to be the case, I was going to go with Elliot Smith. His music is, it's perfect for a rainy day. But as we know, the dream of the 90s is alive in Portland, and this is episode seven. And due to some constructive feedback from our listeners, I'm going to move the part of the podcast where I talk about how good or bad my picks were from the last Elite Series event to after the upcoming picks. They say, don't bury the lead. So I'm not going to. Portland Open Course Talk, Glendevere. Is this a bomber's course like the previous years? No. This is two bomber courses now. Glendevere East and Glendevere West. They've divided up the course and they've separated the East and the West. The East is 11,245 feet for MPO and 9195 for FPO. The West is 10,610 feet for MPO and 9986 for FPO. So while these are modified from the previous Glendevere course from the past few years, this zebra didn't change its stripes. All but a small handful of the holes are extremely long and have OB lining the fairways or some sort of mando to force players to throw specific style or a specific direction. Let's get into some picks now about Portland. As I said, get your favorite long thrower on your team. Eagle is the most obvious one coming off a win over at Beaver State Fling. Simon, who won this last year, two years ago, I forget. Ricky, Isaac, Vinny, Gannon, any one of those. Over the past two years, they've all finished really well here. And any one of those guys should be on your team. And then maybe try to pair them up with like a lower rated sleeper. This week, I'm going to put my money on some non-U.S. sleeper picks to pair them up with. Max Regetnig is only 1,003 rated, but he finished 17th here last year. I think pairing him up with whatever long thrower you want could be a very nice solution. Or you can get really risky and play Albert Tom, who was fifth here last year, but this year really hasn't been able to putt at the broadside of a basket. He's currently rated 128th on tour in C1X putting and worse than that for C2. So honestly... You could look at Albert Tom, but if you know how he's playing, you might want to keep him off your lineup. It's going to be a tough one. The other player that you could look at is another risky pick, but it's Gavin Babcock. Gavin's a pretty far thrower, and he finished 17th here last year. And he's only rated 1,012, so if he can get into that top 30, it's honestly a steal. One more player I'd love to squeeze into my team if I can afford him is Cole Radalin. Cole crushes. And Cole showed up here last year and made a name for himself. This is his home state. This year, it seems like home state players have had an advantage. Um, statistically, it's probably not true. It just really feels that way. In the... Now, Cole's a very streaky player, but when he's on, he's absolutely white hot. If he can keep that together for four full rounds, which is a huge ask at an Elite Series Plus event, I think he's worthwhile to take a look at. Some of the MPO players I would keep off of my team this week. Number one, Andrew Marweed. We might be surrounded by trees here in Portland, but this is not a wooded course. Andrew isn't known for his distance, and at 1,032 rating points, too much risk on this kind of course for Andrew. I just don't see him succeeding to the value that his rating is. And this other pick, this hurts. It hurts my heart to say it. 
but I would avoid Nate Sexton. Now, Nate's from the area, but he hasn't been finishing well the past few events. And with two extremely long courses, I just don't see it playing to his advantages. He did finish 10th here last year, but I feel like that might be his ceiling with the way these courses are set up. So if you're going to pick Sexton, and I would be hard-pressed to blame you, just be wary of that. My FBO picks for Portland. Once again, you can't make the wrong call if you want to put your eggs in the basket of Paige Pierce. Paige has been playing pretty well lately. And honestly, this is, again, a thrower's course. Other players, obviously, that you could throw in there. Holland Hanley and Ella Hansen. Both of those are no-brainers right now. I want to say it's a risky pick, but it's kind of not. Own Scoggins. She's not a long thrower, but Own just gets it done. Now, if you can pair one of those higher-rated players up with a lower-rated player you're comfortable with, again, an ideal situation. But I see a lot of players on skip base picking two more mid-ranged FPO picks. And I think a really good FPO pick this week could be Jen Allen. We saw Beaver State Fling. Jen just plays well on these long courses. She's a huge arm, and as long as her putting is on, which it has been lately, she's a steal at 954. And she loves the Pacific Northwest. Maybe pair her up with, like, uh, Maria Oliva, who's rated 945 and finished 8th here last year and has also been playing very well. She's been avoiding the roller coaster rounds that she had in the past, getting rid of those very very low-rated rounds that seemed to really sink her last year. If you want an FPO deep sleeper, like we're, we're talking you, you only have a few ratings points left to play with and you need somebody, Lindsay Fish. Lindsay's only rated 900, but last year she took 18th here. And if she takes 18th here again at a 900 rating, that's a really great, player to shore up your team now she's not going to be a top 10 finish I don't think that she has that in her but again she took 18th last year she maybe she breaks into the top 20 and that's really all you're looking for for a, uh, a 900 rated player an FPL player I would probably avoid putting in my lineup Sarah Hokum she never does well at these longer courses. I can't say never does well it's just she doesn't generally love them. And the same for Holly Finley. I would probably avoid Holly as well. And both of these FPL players are coming off a long week playing FP40 for a major, of which Own crushed everyone. So I could see both of them maybe running out of steam towards the end of this long four-day event after a major. I just don't see Sarah and Holly finishing well here. Now let's talk about my OTB picks. It feels like so long ago. Some good, some bad. My prediction was that Eagle was going to win. He didn't even cash. But then he went on to win the Beaver State Fling a week later. I, I don't know. So I'm going to take a big L. But I did pick Aaron Gossage. And he was close to winning up until his final nine holes. And he ended up in third place. So good pick by me. My risky MPO pick was Chandler Fry. He finished 55th, didn't cash. Uh, but then he went on to take ninth at Beaver State. So I think maybe they just all my picks were maybe a week ahead. I probably shook the Magic 8 ball like one too many times. Now over on the women's side, I picked Ella Hansen, which is kind of a no-brainer, and she finished fourth. Can't complain about that. And the FPL players I kind of had to look at were Ali Smith and Sayananda, both of which finished well. But I did go on a limb and risk the Kona pick, and it did not pay off for me. So, sorry to Kona, but I just don't think I can pick her anymore for any reason this season. Unless I see two to three really good events where she turns it around I just think uh, Kona's persona non grata. 
can't play her. And here were my players to avoid at the OTB. Alden Harris and Emily Beach. I swear when I pick players to avoid, they must hear me and just shoot for the stars. Alden Harris ended up finishing 13th. Not phenomenal, but a great finish overall. A good pick for his rating. Emily Beach. Emily finished third. Her best finish of the year. I think I'm just better at picking players to win than to avoid. Every time I pick someone to avoid, they just always finish well. What do I do? The train keeps moving on. Let's talk a little bit about draft league players. Waiver wire for MPO. Again, these are waiver players who are available in less than 60% of the leagues out there. And someone who you may want to look for to maybe fill a bench spot or, or possibly a fourth or fifth MPO player, depending on how you're set up. Silas Schultz, still out there in 53% of the leagues. Might not be a bad idea to snag him if he's available for you. He's just a great player to watch, and it really feels like he's starting to come into his own. So if he's out on your bench, maybe look at whoever your lowest rated player is and think about dropping them. And over on FPO side, I'm going to go with VVD, Vanessa Van Dyken. She's only rated, I'm sorry, she's only owned in 42% of leagues, and she's on a little bit of a hot streak for her right now. She's rated 947. So I wouldn't necessarily start her, but I would not want to pass her up if she was there on the bench for me. If you want to see all the data that I've collected over the last few years and the results, you can find a link to the show notes. You can find a link in the show notes below or just go to skipace.com slash Portland Past. Now this is, again, always say this, the exclusive place that I share the research with you that I collect. I don't put it on any websites. I don't put it on Skipace. It's only for this podcast. And I want to thank this week's sponsor for our Portland Open Skip Ace Pro Only Event matchup. It's Disc Member. You know the deal with Disc Member. Sign up for a monthly mystery box for as little as $25 a month, and you can get a box back from you every month with a minimum of $40 in it. Discs, shirts, knickknacks, stickers, all the stuff that these guys want to send you. So thanks to Disc Member for being a sponsor this week, whether they knew it or not. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and I will talk to you again right before the next Elite Series event, which I believe is DDO. So thanks for listening.